Good evening, everyone. Can I have a wave from all the mums and dads? It's great to see you. <laughs> it's nobody better to fight for a cause if you have children yourself, you know? And I want to open just to say, I'm not here today to say that I hate anybody, that I think some people are of less value than what I am or that what we believe. Um, I'm here to say that I'm a mother of three teenagers, and it's my responsibility to make sure that whatever goes into their hearts and minds is the right thing and the age-appropriate thing for that child at that time. And I want to encourage you, as I'm going to share one or two things that we have experienced as a family, I, I feel the weight that I'm representing a lot of mums to here today. I'm representing parents, but not only the parents, I'm representing the children. Because sometimes they are overlooked. Sometimes all these things are just thrown into their laps and it's like feeding them, them something that they don't eat. And just say, no, 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 eat up, eat up. No, one last bite. No, 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 you won't get a sweet before you finish your food. You know, it's, it's force-fed a lot of the times, and I don't think that is fair, and I don't think children's voices are really being heard. I would like to share from persp personal perspective as a mom of three teenagers about how we experience these changes. I know from talking to many parents about this that this is steadily a rise of concern about all the changes that is being, being brought into school. From the first day my eldest went to junior infants, I made it a point to make an appointment with the teachers and to meet up with them and ask them about the curriculum, especially when it comes to sex education. And it's just something I've always done. My meetings were always well received, and I felt that I could play open cards with the teachers about my preference to teach my children myself about sexual development and proposed topics to be covered. Some even gave me a land of the movies they were to watch during the course of the year, and I felt that I had more control over what my children were exposed to. Even give them a heads up of what is coming. It was important for us as parents to have the first input, to lay the foundations the way we believed is right and age-appropriate to them. If topics were to be discussed that we felt might not be, they might not be ready to be exposed to, we would take our kids out of the class for that subject, and they were never an eyebrow raised over it. It was a, collabor a collaboration of educating our children in mutual respectful ways and understanding that the primary responsibility of educating our children still lies with the parents. One year, I was doing the same thing. I went to see a teacher and discuss how we prefer to know in advance about sex education topics to be covered, and I asked if it's okay if I could see the curriculum on it. This year was different. The teacher laughed at me. His reply to me was, Miss Clulo, just so that you know, I have been teaching the boys for a very long time about sexuality and sex orientation by means of using Lego. I feel it is important that you understand that none of this is written in a curriculum. It is my responsibility to make sure that every child that walks through my door will know about different preferences and families, to combat bullying and respect every person, including their differences. I was shocked. I never anticipated that anyone will steer away from the curriculum. As long as I knew what the curriculum said, I felt that it was going to be fine. Now, this man has spent an unknown amount of time with my child, with an obsession and an agenda to teach them, without my consent, about things that they were way too young for. He was only five at the time. My heart broke, and it still is broken. All these years, I have been trying to protect my child and all my children from being exposed to these things too soon was over. The race was on, and I realized if I do not really get stuck in and involve myself with what they learn every single day, someone else will gladly grab that opportunity and lay foundations and plant tiny seeds in their heads. Fast forward years later, I am so grateful for all the effort we have made 
to stay connected with our children during this whole time. I urge every parent to do the same. These are topics that are very uncomfortable to talk about, even with an adult, let alone your own children, the questions they ask. <laughs> But I can assure you, if you do not step up and lay the foundations of what you believe is morally right and carry value for you and your household, someone else will jump in and do that for you. There will be a whole forest of beliefs planted in your child's head and heart, nurtured over time, every single day, little bits at a time, creating beliefs so strong that you will have no way of giving an input or challenge them on it. A few years back, one of my children came home from school and they were distraught. After investigating, it turned out that they were learning that day in school how two men have sex. Then followed a couple of disturbing questions, and we had the daunting task of explaining what oral sex is. They were not ready for this information, but if we did not answer the questions and brought it back into perspective of what our standards and beliefs are, I can assure you again, someone else would have gladly filled those gaps for us. It is so important to know what is written in your child's book. It is our responsibility as parents to pick up those books and read them. Because it's not just about the pictures. It's not just about flicking through what is written in those books and taught every single day. As a Christian family, we base all our teachings and beliefs on the Bible. We will always tell the kids, bring it back to the Word of God. What does the Bible say? Does it line up with the Word of God? But even if you are not a Bible-believing family, there is so much wrong with introducing a child to pornography. Some of us might have polarized opinions on new curriculum, but I can bet you this topic is the one topic that any family can agree on. I am yet to find a parent that think it is a good idea. All the statistics that they build reasoning upon by means of surveys and conducting, uh, that was conducted by an X amount of parents, I doubt that. I haven't seen a survey. Who in this room have actually conducted a survey on allowing pornography to be taught to our 12-year-olds? I am yet to find somebody. This alone should have your blood boiling. The excuse is to teach our kids about pornography so that they won't be so aggressive about it, so they would learn about the dangers of pornography in a safe environment, that kids nowadays are turning to pornography for sex education. Not in every household. Not in my household. All these little changes are, they're bringing in is pure indoctrination. Adults have a problem staying away from porn. How is this going to help a 12-year-old to have more wisdom, more restraint, more discipline to stay away from pornography? You can speak to any profession offering counseling and ask their opinion on what effect pornography has on an adult. This is child grooming, I'm sorry. Any person eager to teach my child about sex, sexuality, sex orientation, and everything related to it, I have a huge question mark behind. There is an agenda, I'm sorry. I can men mention plenty of things that my kids have experienced so far in the process of this whole agenda. But I assure you, the very same thing is happening in your child's school right now. These are not isolated situations. These are fruits of seed planted years ago and nurtured to maturity, so that even our children believe that it's normal and right. Now these topics are in the curriculum. These changes are not inclusive, because it's very clear that religion and opposing beliefs are frowned upon. If the kids have different values and beliefs, it feels to them that they have committed a crime. I am curious to know if given the choice how many students will actually pick these subjects as part of their education. The system is definitely not that inclusive as they make it out to be. One of my boys' teachers asked him to stay behind after class one day. 
When they were alone, she said to him, he must please understand that she does also not agree with the discussions, but that she felt exactly the way he did. That day, it was like she's given him a gift. He felt like he was going off his head, like he's the only one that did not agree with some of the things that were taught. I understand not all teachers agree with what is being taught, and I understand that many feel the way we do as parents. It is time to make waves about this. It is time. There is a saying that says, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Have you heard of that? It's time to start squeaking. I'm sorry. Contact your school. Oppose the introduction to pornography to the junior cert. Contact your local TDs. Stay connected with groups like CVI who are willing to fight for this course. Come to the meetings. Sign every petition going about this if you can find them. If we all do this, it has to be brought to the right people's attention. We can only make a difference if we all step up and speak out. It is not too late. There is power in numbers. Thank you.